Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Autos. So I thought I'd do this video on electric vans because there's very little information out there. Yeah, electric vans have been around in the UK before the cars. They've been around since about uh, 1998, actually. So it's a bit cold and wet this morning. It is raining, so I hope the video quality is okay. So here we have a selection of electric vans. I wanted to do this today because that Nissan ENV 200 down the end is actually going out tomorrow. And this pretty much makes up all the electric vans available in the UK today. So uh, these are proper factory made vans with lithium ion battery packs. There were vans before. The sort of earliest electric van in the UK was the Citroen Berlingo that came out in 1998. It was mainly used by the French post office, but uh, it was also brought into the UK officially, but there's very few around. Most are probably off the road now. And then Allied Electric were doing sort of conversion vans. They tended to do the Peugeots, there's Peugeot Partners, Peugeot Expert, Peugeot Boxers, and there's quite a few Peugeot TP seated um, vehicles around. They're all uh, originally diesels off the production line and then Allied Electric converted them. There's also uh, Ford Transit and Transit Connect vans converted by Smiths. The trouble is with these electric vehicles is no one can support them the parts aren't available both Smith and Allied no longer uh, are in the market they have stopped production of these and there's just no support and you can't take the vans to a main dealer because they just can't get the bits or support so I don't touch those vehicles um, generally if those vehicles have a fault they pretty much end up going to the scrapyard so um, these vans in front of us they have been around since sort of 2011-12 and these are proper supported factory made lithium ion vans that uh, will have many years worth of support and parts available. There are bigger vans available, we certainly will be coming this year. The LDV EV80 is the van that's been around in uh, 2018. It's actually made by the Chinese Sayak Motor Company because they bought LDV uh, back in 2010 after they went bust it was obviously a British manufacturer so they're using the old Maxxis body shell and uh, it's currently the only uh, large electric van available in the UK it's got a 56 kilowatt hour battery it does approximately 120 miles and it has CCS charging uh, the Renault Master is uh, due to hit the UK soon it will be available from earlier this year 2019 um, the same the thing that's a shame with that one though they're only putting the 33 kilowatt hour battery pack in the same as the renault um, kangoo so it's only going to have a real world range of about 55 miles which really isn't good enough in uh, 2019 but also in 2019 the volkswagen crafter is going to come out and um, that's going to be similar spec to the renault master actually and then uh, later on we're going to get a mercedes sprinter um, not sure whether that's going to come out in 2019 it will probably be more like 2020 so currently these are the electric vans available in the UK there's quite a few on the road and actually you you probably have seen them but don't realize they're electric the only way you can tell is uh, they've got a, a charge flap so on the Kangoos there is a charge flap there on the front often these graphics are removed so they look absolutely no different to a diesel version and on the Peugeots they have this extra flap here on the wing so unless you notice that and notice there's no exhaust pipe out the back you really wouldn't know they were electric because obviously they use the same body shell as the diesel so these vans have been around well certainly the uh, kangoo here has been around since 2012 so they're obviously getting a few years old now and reasonably priced the advantage of using an electric van is um, there's no road tax currently there's no london congestion zone I also hear in London also EVs get free parking, uh, you can often get free charging as well and the maintenance costs are very much lower, they hardly need any servicing and when they do it's um, generally only an inspection and a pollen filter change and obviously very low running costs, uh, the fuel costs um, are a fraction of the price, generally 2 to 3 p a mile to run an electric versus 13 to 14 p a mile for running a diesel vehicle. But obviously if you can factor in free charging and um, even low cost uh, night rate charging where your electricity um, charge is almost only about a third or a half of the price then the costs just tumble even more. 
And the other thing to note is electric vans are actually MOT exempt. The law did change last year, so now only vans have registered before the 1st of March 2015 are MOT exempt. So these two vans here, the Kangoo and the Partner, don't actually need to have MOT tests. So let's start with the Renault Kangoo. This is the most common electric van because it came out first. It's been around the longest. These came out in 2012. You can get them in two body sizes. This is the normal one, the short wheelbase van called an ML20. You can get a long wheelbase van called the Maxi LL21. And the way to tell the long wheelbase van is you get another 10 inches or so here in front of the rear axle and you'll have another bit of body cladding along here. They're actually the largest electric van as far as cargo space goes. And you can also get a crew cab version in the Maxi long wheelbase van. And uh, you get an extra row of uh, three seats at the back, so they come as five seat only. And you can tell those because it's usually a glass panel there in the door. And as an option, you can also have rear windows um, in the back as well. So these vans all have 22 kilowatt battery packs. So it's a lithium ion battery that sits under the floor. And generally on the Renaults, those battery packs are leased. So you buy the van, but then you lease the battery pack from Renault. Actually, it's from RCI Bank. And you pay a monthly fee. That starts at £25 plus VAT a month. And then that battery pack is then Renault's responsibility. So should that battery pack there fail or degrade more than 60% of its original capacity, then they will change the battery pack. And also in that service, you get breakdown cover included. So should you just run out of electricity while you're out on the road or have a breakdown, they will pick you up and recover you. So these vans have 3.6 kilowatt AC charging only. The charging is here on the front via type one connector. So these are typically overnight charging only really. There's no rapid charging on these. So you look, you have to, when you're choosing in a van, you have to look at your daily range. And these typically do, uh, you know, 90 miles maximum in the summer, um, but you know, somewhere between 80, 90 miles and in the winter, somewhere between 50 and 70 miles. Again, it all depends on how you drive and how much heating you use. But if that daily range is uh, suitable for your normal daily use, then these vans just are fantastic. So they're no good for the long trips because you, you, it's, it's sort of overnight charging. You know, these charging rates on these are only 3.6 kilowatt. It's gonna take you something like uh, five hours, I think. So um, they're no good to uh, do the long trips. But what you can do is if you're out on site during the day, there's no reason why you can't use the portable charger, the granny cable, which I'll show you later, and then do a top up during the day while the van is not being used at your workplace and then you can extend the range that way. The warranty on these is uh, four years on the van and five years on the electric uh, drivetrain. So effectively, that is everything under the bonnet. So that's the electric motor, the charger, the inverters. That's all guaranteed for five years. And the nice thing on the Renault, ca Renault vans, like you can do on the Renault Zoe, is you can extend that warranty. So as long as you extend it before it's four years old, you can keep extending that warranty until the van is 10 years old. So the other thing to point out with these is they are often a little bit basic on the inside. Everything was an extra. So majority of them don't come with radios. This one has actually got an aftermarket radio fitted and a Bluetooth kit here because this didn't come with radio. Uh, the radio is an option. So uh, it's very easy to fit a radio on one of these if it doesn't come with one. All the wiring is there, the antennas on the roof. All you've got to do is fit some speakers in the door uh, you do need to get some surrounds, mounting surrounds to go back behind the speaker. But fit the speakers in the door, the wiring is all there, the wiring is there, and it's just a case of plugging it all in, really. They also, uh, most of them don't have air conditioning. Um, so uh, you have to watch that as well if you want air conditioning for the summer. Again, because that was a, an extra when they were new, and the uh, majority of them didn't have any extras fitted to them. The other thing these vans do have though is preconditioning. They all have that. So you can set a timer here on your dash and you tell the vehicle what time you're gonna leave in the morning. And then while it's plugged into your house and charging, it will the van will turn on and it will put the heating on and therefore it will melt the ice off the windows and warm the cab up. 
so uh, the idea of that is then when you get in the battery is still 100 percent charged you've still got full range and you can probably then do your commute without having any heating on at all because the van's already hot and uh, it works the same in the summer it will uh, try to cool the van down as well and prepare the van ready for your journey so if it's got the air conditioning that comes on and cools it better but if it hasn't the fans just come on and try to cool the vehicle then the only other option you get on these is your bulkheads behind the seats so this one here has the standard solid steel bulkhead there is also a mesh type bulkhead that has a door here that opens up um, over the passenger seat and the passenger seat folds down which allows you to put long loads through but obviously if you've got a solid bulkhead then you don't have that facility and all the short wheelbase Kangoos have a single sliding door on the near side and double doors on the back and the maxi long wheelbase van has a sliding door on both sides the rear cargo area on the Kangoo looks like this They've all got twin rear doors. Those doors can open 180 degrees to allow you to load with a forklift. Most apply lined. Obviously this one's got the solid bulkhead. And the thing you have to watch out for is uh, they're often missing this rubber bung, which allows the doors to shut properly and hit that striker plate there. The other thing to note is they have a jack and wheel brace toolkit down there. I have seen before ply lining kits that people have fitted and they've covered that up or taken the jack out and then it goes missing. So these do have a full size spare wheel which is hung underneath. They're the only electric van that do have a full size spare wheel. Most others like most electric, well like all cars nowadays to save weight, they do away with a spare wheel and you just get a punch of repair kit. There was a facelift on this van, it's called the Phase 2, so in 2014 the front end has had a facelift and the charging socket on the front has changed to a Type 2 socket, not that that makes any difference. The only difference in this vans is the front end, the bonnet, the lights and that front grille, nothing else has changed. And then in 2017 there was the option to purchase the battery pack when the van was new. So you could either choose whether you had a leased version or a purchased version. The ones with the battery um, that it was purchased and therefore the batteries owned are called I models. So you've got to look for a little I badge on the back and on the logbook in the model name it will have the letter I. And also in late 2017 was the newer larger battery pack so the later vans have a 33 kilowatt hour battery pack so that gives it a range of approximately 150 miles and the other upgrades they had is that you had a heat pump heating system whereas these have a resistive heater so they do use quite a lot of range in the winter you'd probably lose roughly 10 to 15 percent of range when you want to use the heating whereas a heat pump is far more efficient it's more like five percent and the charging was upgraded. The charger there at the front on the new model is a 7 kilowatt AC charger, whereas these are 3.6 kilowatt. But still on the Kangoo vans, on the newer ones, you still don't get DC rapid charging. So you've still got to look at your daily range and consider the charging as overnight only. So let's look at the Peugeot Partner. So here's a couple of Peugeot Partner vans. You can also get the Citroen Berlingo. It's an identical van. The only difference is the badge on the front and the uh, front grille. There's no difference. Otherwise, the spec is identical on both vans. So this one is uh, the original shape. These came out in 2013 and they're all in one spec. It's called the SEL1 in terms of the electric vehicles. They are all 22 kilowatt hour battery pack. The batteries are owned so there's no leasing like there is on the Kangoos and they've all got three seats up front as well in all models so it's the only electric van with three seats up front and the only difference really on the vans spec wise is the bulkheads so this is probably the most common bulkhead where you get a solid bulkhead at the bottom mesh at the top and you also get this door here that can flap down and then this seat folds flat and it allows you to put long loads through so you can get three meter copper pipe or conduit through. So they have a sliding door on the near side and twin doors at the back. There is an option to get windows in the back but I've never seen that in electric. 
The charging on the Peugeot Partner vans is particularly good because they all come with DC rapid charging. You have so an AC socket on this side. So this is a 3.6 kilowatt, i.e. 16 amp AC socket. It's type one. So this is typically your overnight charging at home or on a fast charging port on a public charger. But charging on this port is going to take you uh, something like three to five hours, something like that. And then on the rear, where the diesel filler cap would have been, you have your Chadamo DC charging port. So this is your rapid charger. So on a motorway network or some other public charging ports, you get that 50 kilowatt DC rapid charge. And the van will charge in about 20 to 30 minutes to 80%. That's from flat. So it, what it means on these vans is you can do the longer distances. So if you're out at work during the day, you can get that 20 minute top up from a rapid charger. Or if you want to do the longer distances, then you sort of do roughly 70 mile hops and then do another rapid charge. One other quick thing I'll point out is the vans have this graphic on the side, all the electric vans. That's another way of pointing out whether it's electric unless someone's taken them off, of course. And then looking on the inside, they've all got three seats, as I said. The two um, passenger seats do fold. And then the other nice thing you get with the um, partner vans is they all do come with air conditioning. Uh, this is your gear selector here. Obviously all electric vehicles are automatic because you don't have gearboxes. They also all have stereos, single slot CD player and a basic stereo. They don't all have Bluetooth though, so Bluetooth was an extra, so it depends whether it was spec from when it was new. The one thing they don't have though is they don't have preconditioning, so you can't pre-warm or cool that van while it's plugged into a charger. The partners also have good storage. You have a, a storage box here in front of the dash. You've also got overhead storage above you here. You've got a decent sized glove box. You've got storage under this seat. Um, the only thing that isn't quite so good is your cup holders are in the door pockets. So the cargo area on a partner van looks like this. This one has got ply on the floor and around the wheel arches. To be honest, the wheel arches don't really protrude. You don't really need this. But uh, this one has also got the plastic, corrugated plastic lining on the side. They often don't have that. They often don't have anything on the sides. This one's obviously got the standard uh, solid and mesh bulkhead like that with the door where that half folds down and also can be removed, which allows you to load long items over the passenger seat. They all do have a light up here and a 12 volt charging socket in the rear. So we'll just look in the cargo area of this newer partner van I've got here because this shows what they're like as standard. So this hasn't had any ply lining fitted. This is as they come out of the factory. So you just have a steel floor, but you do get this rubber protective mat, which you can remove. And then you get this plastic cladding down the side and obviously nothing fitted along the top. So as I said just now, you don't really need to box the wheel arches because they don't protrude much. You know, that's only protruding about one and a half inches on either side because you have this plastic cladding that's filling in the gap. And then obviously there, that's the option where you have no bulkhead and you just have the ladder rack behind the driver. So this is what the earlier partner vans look like. They have that front end. And then in 2015, they had a facelift. So you get the new shape front end. That is the only difference. So there's no other difference in specs. It's just that new front end. And then in late 2017, there is the option to have the L2 body. So it's not a longer wheelbase. The extra load space is actually tacked on at the back here. And you'll see there will be a, a line here where the two bits of metal work are, are sort of glued together and you get another roughly 10 inches, I guess, stuck on the back. You'll notice a lot of the Royal Mail vans, the diesel vans are the L2 version. So that came out in electric in late 2017 and the battery pack remains the same. They're all 22 kilowatt hour battery packs. So Peugeot or Citroen haven't yet bought out a larger battery pack. 
I'm hoping they will in 2019 because the newer body design has come out, the new van, the new partner van uh, is now out in diesel so there will be electric coming soon and I'm assuming they're going to up the battery size to uh, at least 33 kilowatt hour to match the Renault Kangoo but I wouldn't be surprised it's going to be a bit higher. So the only, the only other options you can get on the later vans in 2017 is there's an option of a DAB radio and also LED daytime running lights at the front. So these Peugeot partner vans, they have a three-year warranty on the van, a five-year warranty on the electric drivetrain. So that's again, is basically everything under the bonnet, your electric motor, your charger, your inverters, and also the battery pack, because you own the battery pack on the partner vans. And the battery then in 2018, so models after June 2018, they then give you an eight year warranty on that battery pack, but still five year warranty on all the EV components. So next we have here the Nissan ENV 200 electric van. These have been out since June 2014. They are available in one size body only but you can also get it as a crew van or a people carrier and they come with either five or seven seater versions. So currently there are only two seven seater electric vehicles available. These in the seven seat version of course and the Tesla Model X. These come with a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. The battery is always owned and you have to watch the spec of these because the charging does vary. Your charging ports are all at the front under this flap and this one is a top of the range van with all the extras. So your AC charging port, they obviously all have an AC charging port. The standard charger is a 3.3 kilowatt charger or you can get an upgraded 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. So what you've got to look for is the word plus in the model name. When it's got plus it is the upgraded 6.6. .6. This is your Chadimo 50 kilowatt DC rapid charge standard on the vans what you're looking for is the word rapid in the name and that gives you the Chadamo rapid charging so again like all the others this will charge the van to 80 percent in 20 to 30 minutes whereas this again is sort of typically overnight charging on. so you have to be a bit careful when buying a Nissan ENV 200 van because if you want that rapid charging, you've got to look for the word rapid in the model name. And if you want the upgraded charger, you've got to look for plus. But not many people understand that, not even main dealers. So they often don't give you the full descriptions because they don't really know the meaning of it. So the best way to tell is to open that flap or get a picture under the flap and you can see whether it's got the Chadamo connector. And if you want to check whether it has the upgraded charger or not, the only way to check is here upon the dash. Let me just start it up and then up here on the dash you're looking for the charging screen and you have to use the buttons down here to control the computer and there you can see the charging screen. You, if you can see two charging times as we can see there three kilowatt and six kilowatt that means the van has got the upgraded 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. So these vans all do have two sliding doors and this is the solid bulkhead and you have glass up here with uh, a mesh protecting it. And I would also just say these have got the lowest um, floor of any van so they're great for putting heavy items in. And size wise these are the biggest out of all the standard vans but the only one that will have the edge slightly is on length is the Renault Kangoo Maxi version, but there's not much in it. This is very similar size to a Maxi. This is uh, as they come out the factory, so there's no ply being fitted to this. So you have a rubber protection mat on the floor. You get this sort of corrugated fabric panels on the side and on the rear doors. This has got these uh, rails fitted. They're not standard. They were fitted by the previous owner and uh, obviously solid bulkhead with a glass window as I've shown you. So you do get a light up here and there's no charging socket in the back of these. And then on the inside they're all two-seater only. All these vans have preconditioning. 
This one is a top of the range Tecna model, so you get the sat nav. Um, you also get heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is really nice on electric vehicles. So the idea when you have the heated seats and heated steering wheel is you don't need to use the heating so much because the heating system does draw a lot of energy. But it's far more efficient to heat up your contact points and you know even when it's pretty cold you can just drive with the heated steering wheel heated seats and you don't need the heating on but you only get that on the Tecna models so as i said this van here is the top spec Tecna model so it comes with the sat nav touch screen most others don't get that and you get the standard uh, stereo and standard heating controls so like the others and all electric vehicles it's automatic only on the Nissan ENV200 you have a B mode, so when you're down in drive you can toggle across to B mode, which is braking mode, just the same as a Nissan Leaf, and that allows you to select your regen braking. So you have standard and then you have braking mode, which just increases the regen braking. But even on that increased regen braking, it's probably still slightly less than the other vans. The Kangoo and the Partner vans and the Bolingo, of course, they have quite strong regen braking as standard. It's not selectable. So with those, when you lift off the accelerator, the van slows down quite quickly on the motor. And obviously you're putting that energy back into the battery pack. And you genuinely can drive with only one pedal. You just use the accelerator. And you only touch the brakes to hold it when you've stopped or obviously an emergency. With the Nissan, the regen is slightly less and then you toggle across to the B mode when you want to increase that regen. Um, for example, if you're driving along and coming into a bend and you want to slow down, you toggle on to the B mode. That slows you down a bit quicker without touching the brakes because obviously when you touch the brakes you're, you're wasting energy and with the regen braking you want to put that energy back into the battery pack instead and that increases your range. Because this one is a Tecna van, the top spec van, it does have Allo wheels, but the majority of them don't have those. So as I said, these have got 24 kilowatt hour battery packs. Even though the battery is slightly bigger than all the other vans, you don't get any more range. Again, it's the same as all the others, up to sort of 90 miles maximum in the summer. But again, it depends how you drive. In 2018, there is a newer version of these with an upgraded battery. So you now get a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack on the new models. And with those, you get a range of approximately 150 miles. So next, let's quickly talk about charging. All electric vans can be charged from a three pin plug. So you use what's called a portable charger or often called a granny cable. And they have a standard three pin plug. And then the other end is the connector to plug into the van. So these can only draw 10 amp, so they do charge at a much slower charging rate, so overnight charging, but the, the van will always be charged uh, by the morning. Or they're quite handy if you're at work during the day and your van sat for all day while you're on a site, for example, as long as you've got a three pin socket, you can uh, charge the van and get a top up. So here we have the standard AC charging cable. So this end plugs into the van. This end is always type two to plug into your home wall charging box or a public charging post. So typically those charging posts are seven kilowatt. Some of them are free, uh, but charging rates are much lower at AC as I've described before. So generally, if you're public charging, you would be wanting to rapid charge, which you can't do on the Kangoo vans, but you can do on the Bilingo Partner and the majority of the Nissan ENV vans. And when you're public charging on that Chadamo DC connector, you're gonna get a charge to about 80% in roughly 20 minutes. There's more information on the vans on the Go Green Autos website. I always generally have electric vans in stock I can also source um, X demonstration stocks, so effectively brand new vans, um, particularly the Peugeot partners. I've often supplied them nearly new, uh, sometimes with, with as little as 30 miles on. So if you're interested in an electric van, give me a call or email and I can deliver these vehicles nationwide.